Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. I think sometimes that we allow things to be put on us. Or in other words, a lot of times we'll carry things, and you're not even supposed to carry them. You know, just like I look at Kim and, and, and I laugh, and I don't mean to, but I look at Kim and Robbie's wedding, and you see all this stuff, and all they want to do is get married so they can be together. And that's what God told me. I'm laughing up here. Listen, and, and, and that's the way it is with everybody. That we carry things that we're not supposed to carry. You know, I don't want you to be discouraged this morning. I want you to choose right, though. I mean, God is a God of truth. You know, if there's anybody this week that's ever heard from God, I've heard from God about this message, and I've been grieved because of the wicked. I've been grieved because... The people in my workplace, they're lost, you know, and I'm right there in their midst always talking to them and just being grieved over the way that they are. But, you know, it's all about choice in your life. It's it's the choices that you make. If you don't make the right choice, you'll suffer. If you don't don't choose the right way, you'll be in trouble because God is a holy God. He's a God that will forgive, yes. He's a God of mercy, but there's a time in everyone's life that, that if you don't choose right, and God's finally said, you know, you've gone and you've gone and you've gone and you've gone, and it becomes almost like just a game with God. I want to tell you right now, it's not a game with this preacher. This word that I preached to you this morning is from the heart of God. You know, we need to be remembered, or, or I'm sorry, we need to be reminded this morning sometimes that, you know, who we are and, and how we're to live. Because the Lord is going to show us and distinguish between the wicked this morning and the righteous. Those that serve God and don't serve Him. Those that live for Him and those that don't. But there is a distinction in this hour that God is making, even in the body of Christ. The Bible talks about it plainly a lot of times. And I'm going to get there. I'm going to pray in a minute. We'll see people. And I've seen them in the church. I've seen them outside the church. I've seen God talk to them and deal with them. I've seen them, uh, God be good to them over and over and over again. But they harden their heart to God. And the Bible says that they're often, he being often reproved, hardeneth his heart, or hardeneth, it says his neck, suddenly shall be cut off. And that with that. And I've seen that. And it's not because that we've done anything wrong. It's not because that we've, we've, uh, tried to push people aside. But it's the choices that you and I make. And the end result has not got to do with whether or not you even listen to me this morning or not. It has no, no bearing on your eternal soul. It's up to you and God. It's your relationship. And you're going to have to make the right choice this morning. Every one of us. You're going to have to choose God. You can't play around with God in this aisle. You can't play around with God, period. You know, I'm sorry. I've heard, I've heard a lot of... Uh, of stories, a lot of bad things this week that have happened, but you know, but I hear also, you know, God is, a, He told me to tell you this, well, I want to tell my church not to be discouraged, but I also want you to tell them that it's also about the choices that you make. Every one of us, including this preacher. I'm not going to be sad. I refuse. I'm not going to be moved by somebody's tears. But I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm going to tell them what the truth is. And everybody has a choice. If you want to change, you can change. You know what? I'm making a change. Look here. I'm getting skinny. I'm getting, I've, I've lost eight pounds. I'm going, I, you, you mark my word. Mark Severance is going to be at 200 pounds. That's my goal. And you got to set goals for yourself. You got to set goals in the kingdom. You got to set goals in the natural. You know what my goal is here this morning? To preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all I'm here for this morning is to preach this gospel to you because it's what God wants me to do. What does God want you to do this morning? We don't want to live like a pack of dogs. We don't want to live for the devil. But we want to live for God. How many in here, we claim to be Christians. We say, yes, we love you, oh God. 
But when we walk out the door, we, we don't even think about God. That's not the way to live. Anyway, I better be, be quiet before I make everybody mad. Stretch your hands up here towards me. I want to preach this message this morning, and it's called Out of Step. Father, this morning, your word is true. God, I thank you this morning, God, that you love us, you love your church, you love people. You're long-suffering, you're merciful, you're kind. God, you'll do anything you can, but God, there's also, God, the people that you call wicked, the people, God, that are lost, the people, God, that, that, that you've dealt with and dealt with, God. And this morning, God, as we rightly divide the word, I ask you for the anointing to be on this word today to minister to your people, God, to open our hearts, to open our eyes, to open our ears, God, to the truth, Father. And Lord, this morning I ask you for the anointing, God. Lord, I ask you, Father, that you would not al uh, allow me to speak anything that you don't want me to speak, God, that you don't want me to do, Father. And God, I ask you right now as I plead the blood of the Lamb of God over your people, Lord, that we will not be discouraged, God, that we will be lifted up this morning. My God, I feel the anointing. Raise your hands that we will be lifted up this morning, God, and that we will be encouraged, God, by this word. Now, Lord, we praise you. We know that you're the king. We, we, we claim and, and we confess that you are the Lord, that you are Jesus, the Son of the living God. And, Lord, let us walk it out live our lives even as you lived your life God everything you did God was done for the will of the Father now God today we ask you to bless this word and to bless your people and the people of God said amen maybe see there's a woman before I preach and get in the gospel we're going to be in Daniel chapter 5 the first 5 verses but I want to tell you this before I start there's a there's a there's a, a a woman in my workplace. It's she's my underboss. I have an overboss and an underboss. I told her I felt like I was mob because you know that's what I felt like. You know I've got one boss that's in my resource room where I work all the time, and I've got my team lead who's over everybody. So, but it, she's in there, and I've been ministering to her. Her name is uh, she has two names. I call her uh, Michelle. She also is called Catherine. So sometimes I like to mess with her, but. She's a pretty good girl, you know. She's a nice lady, but she needs the Lord. And she's marching right now. She's in this woman's march. And, you know, she was, I could hear her on the telephone just getting everybody stirred up. And, you know, and, 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 and I was over there listening to her. And, you know, and, and she, when she got off the phone, you know, I said, well, let me ask you something. I said, just exactly what are you marching for? And, what, how she was marching for social injustice and, and all these different things. And I looked her right in the eye, and here's what I said to her. I said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's what I, I told her, the whole scripture. I told her every bit of it. I said, you know, I said, if you believe in him, I said, you'll never perish. And I said, in your mind, and I said, you know, they wanted Jesus to do that. They want us, you know, that's what, why they crucified him because Judas wanted Jesus to become more of a ruler of, the, of this earthly realm than what he had come to die for you and I that we could be, you know, that we could live forever. But my point is, is that we've got it. She's out of step. She doesn't understand the truth. And then I, then I began to ask her, and she, she even made mention to me about how that we believe that our way is the only way. And I said, it is. I said, he is the way and the truth and the life. I didn't bat an eye. I didn't back down an inch. But I said it to her in love. And I told her, I said, you know, I said, you know, one day I said, you know, you'll stand before the Lord. I said, everybody will. So today, that's why I want, to, I guess, another reason that I want to talk about the wicked today. I'm going to tell you about the wicked. I've never preached a message like this. But I want us all to realize that we're coming to the end of this race. We're coming to the end of this thing. That, that trumpet's going to sound. The bell's going to ring. And it's going to be all over with. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost and so do you. When it's over with, it's over with. And there's no more crying. There's no more saying this or God will separate us then. He'll, like I said last week, there'll be five that are wise and there'll be five that are foolish. There'll be a percentage of us that'll be ready. There'll be those that aren't ready. But you know, my job is to show you and to speak to you, not because I'm mad, not because I don't love you, but to show you the truth. The truth is that He is a God of love and He is. He is a great God that gives us chance and chance and chance. 
There's also a time, though, that people, they get to the place to where God's, you know, I remember a friend of mine, he got so far down with God, God said, look, I'm, I'm about fed up with you. You know, and if he doesn't deal with the, them anymore, and there's people right now all over the place, God doesn't deal with them anymore. His spirit has departed from them. I hate to say that, but that's the Bible. He says it in the Bible. And if you don't get it right now, if you don't get it right inside the church where the Lord is present, how are you going to do it out here where the devil's running rampant and got this whole world in chaos and confusion? Come on, help me preach. I'm telling you like it is. But today I want to encourage you. I want you to be encouraged that you make the right choices, that you hold on to God and that you run the race with patience and you be joyful. And it's, this ain't about being down and oh woe is me and oh everything's bleak and blim. No it's not. I've got something to look forward to. I always want to get an edge. I hope you always look to get an edge on the devil. I'm always looking. I'm always trying to get an edge in life because that's the way I want to live. I want to whip the devil on this turn. I want to whip him on this turn. And I know God's got the victory but you know what? I've got to make choices and the right choice will get me the victory but the wrong choice I'll fail every time is that not right give our God praise can you turn me up just a little cat I did I can't I don't have any reverb or something up here it's hard to put my voice just a little bit thank you let's read this Daniel chapter 5 beginning with verse 1 Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords. And the Bible says he drank wine before the thousand. Then he said, Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father, and that's his great-grandfather, by the way, Nebuchadnezzar, which he had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines drank in them. Verse 4 says they drank wine and praised the gods. And my, my point is, is they didn't praise or give glory to the living God, but they praised other gods. They praised the gods of gold. Is that not us? Is that not what we do a lot of times? Boy, it's quiet in here, isn't it? Praise the God of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. You know, I'd like to have been there to see that. See, this is the devil. In my book, this girl that's marching in this march, it's the devil that's gathering, not God. Just like he gathered the people in the old covenant, he gathered them to build that great big wall, the gr a great big tower. Nimrod was over it. He gathered them all together. And they're sitting there, and, and, and you, have you ever noticed how that people that, that the Bible says that the wicked, they can never rest, they can never have peace? Do you, are you listening to this preacher? I didn't come here this morning to tickle your ears. I came here to tell you what God would have me to tell you. The wicked can never rest, and they never have peace. Never. There's a lot of people that come into the people that I help at my workplace. The reason that they're in trouble, I can tell you right now, because they don't obey God. They're not in church. A lot of them are, 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 are on some kind of substance on, or drinking or something going on with them. Their life is, is in shambles. And they don't need unemployment. They need God. But somewhere in the midst of this drunken feast, in verse 5, in the same hour, the Bible says, came forth fingers of a man's hand and rode over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. The king saw the part of the hand that wrote. And we remember what he wrote. See, God will let you see it. God is not in the darkness. He's in the light. 
and he wrote right above the candlestick.